Blue Dolphin here, and today this is an exciting one. We're going to be jumping into the Greenbone open source vulnerability management platform that uses the Open Bass Scanner. Wow, you have to check this out. Let's get into it. Jumping right into things here, this is the Greenbone open source vulnerability management tool. So that means it's totally free if you can just set it up in your environment. Granted, they do have paid for products, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about the vulnerability management platform with the OpenVast scanner that you could deploy in your environment and get it going right away if you wanted. So let's talk about it a little. I'm going to go ahead and just browse through the home page here where we can just learn that it's, you know, one of the world's most trusted open source vulnerability management platforms using all sorts of countries. Very cool stuff. A little background is Greenbone uses the OpenVast scanner and OpenVast is largely influenced by Nessus. The reason for this is in 2005, Nessus started to go closed source, if I understand correctly, and some of the developers decided to continue the open source Nessus project. And that became OpenVAS. OpenVAS in 2006, I think in 2006, was then bought by Greenbone and incorporated into their vulnerability management platform. And you can see if you jump on the website, they got some cool information here. You can jump out. They have a great community. You can get involved. But I'm going to show you the tool here. All right. We're going to go through everything one at a time here, but I'm just going to get into each subcategory of Greenbone lightly. But I'll have other videos where I really get into the details. So, at first glance, we do have a dashboard here. Now, I do have a setup video, so check that out. I'm not going to talk about the setup here, but what I'm going to talk about is all about what we see in the GUI and the web portal. Our dashboard, very cool. You can see we have CVE creation by times, we have our MVTs, we have our total tasks, tasks are like security scans, and we have the option to customize these dashboards. As you can see, I can have results-oriented dashboards, asset display-oriented dashboards, and then security information from our feeds, which are very cool, and I'm going to get into that in a bit here. Okay, let's take a look at the scans tab. So this is what we're going to do to do our scans, and you can see I've already queued up a scan that I've run on the damn vulnerable web application. and. It was run very simple. These are called tasks, and I've called this one test task. Once you run a task, you get a report, and you can see under tasks we have reports. Looking at this, this is a report that breaks down and gives us some more details. So we have mediums, low, and we could dive into this if we wanted to and play around with the information. Next, we have the results category. So the results are going to show us what vulnerabilities are actually found. You can see we have key exchange issues. Cookie attributes, clear text transmission of information, so no HTTPS, the ports, the time, the IP, very cool stuff. All right, now let's take a look at the vulnerabilities tab. So again, this is going to be kind of like the results page, but it's going to display and aggregate information a little differently. And then I really like this feature here. You have the notes. You can literally jump in here and add notes if you want to to vulnerabilities. And there's the override section. No idea what that means, to be honest. All right, let's look at the assets. I really like this because once you start doing a lot of scanning, you're going to need a way to track your assets and what you've perhaps found on a network if you're doing a large subnet scan, for example. So they even give you this awesome host topology map right here. Very cool. I like this a lot. Now, I've obviously only scanned one host, but you can imagine how helpful this would be in a larger environment. Again, we have the operating system. So this is going to be the aggregation of operating systems from all our scans, or we could use custom filters to kind of change it, but we're not going to get too detailed today. As well, under assets, we have TLS certificates. Nothing really there to talk about. Okay, so we have resilience. This is neat. We can actually cut remediation tickets, which I'll get into in another video, but these are going to be tickets to just track certain vulnerabilities. And when we add these, we're going to see them all displayed here and we can really customize this dashboard so we can kind of see or you can show someone in your enterprise the progress you're making through remediation. All right, let's move on from remediation tickets. Look at compliance policies. These are very interesting, just compliance policies, as you would expect. I haven't looked at them a whole lot, but it is interesting what they have here. And you can actually upload several. If you just Google around, you'll find all sorts. And these are very helpful because you can incorporate them into Greenbone. And I'm going to get into that in another video. All right, let's look at the business process map. This is something really cool where you can draw out business processes. This is super cool. And again, I really want to talk about this right now, but I'm not going to. This is going to be in another video, but this is an awesome feature that comes with Greenbone. 
So you see, if you if you create tests, we can now add notes and we can say, you know, this host here does this. These are the results that were found on the host by assigning a host to this. And then we can start to draw correlations, data flows, super cool. All right, let's move on though from resilience and look under security info. This is gonna be super important. Security info, these are our feeds. So this is how the OpenVAST scanner actually gets the information to determine if it's looking at a vulnerability or not. Now, let's start at the top here. So we're going to go over to, before we get into all these, we're actually going to look at them at a high level under the feeds status. Okay, so what are we dealing with? We have NVTs. NVTs are network vulnerability tests. You can see them here. The origin is the Greenbone community feed. You can click on them and you'll get all this amazing information. And when they're being created, so you can see it's being updated very regularly. And that's amazing. That's exactly what we want. And look at this, divine local security checks. Wow. Okay. Let's look at the next one. The next one's going to be the SCAP bundle. And if you don't know, SCAP stands for Security Content Automation Protocol. These are specific standards to enable automated vulnerability management, measurement, and policy compliance evaluation of systems deployed in an organization. So let's take a look at the specifics. I'm sure we all know about CVEs. We see the CVEs here. Yes, organizations and tools all share CVEs. CPEs, this is a little different. This is common platform enumeration. So this is going to be for identifying platforms and versions. So it's like a dictionary to help identify what type of platform, version, and subversion you might be running. Next, we have the DFN cert. Oh, sorry, we have OVAL definitions. And OVAL definitions are really interesting. OVAL definition stands for Open Vulnerability and Assessment Language. And it's an international information security community standard designed to promote open and publicly available security content. This standardizes the transfer of this information across the entire array of security tools. So I kind of look at it like OIDs for, for certain devices using the SNMP protocol, but this is kind of like a security version of that, a different theory, same, a, a similar theory, but a very different implementation and application. So again, these are going to be the OVAL definitions, open vulnerability and assessment language. And you can look under here and you can see, obviously, there's a lot of MITRE here, tons of, of MITRE information. That's a big provider of these OVAL definitions. Very cool. All right, let's look at the next one. So if we go back to feeds, You can see we have DFN cert advisories. This is similar to cert uh, bund advisories, but instead of it largely coming from like MITRE or the security or the, what is it, the Cyber Infrastructure Security Agency, this is kind of like the European version from what I understand. And then if we look under that, we have compliance policies, which are really cool. You can jump in here, you can upload baselines if you wanted to, or, or um, STIGs, STIGs for short. There's port lists. So you can define predefined port lists. You have report formats. Of course, this is really important. Reports are a big part of vulnerability assessment and management. You have PDFs, text, uh, CSVs, everything you'd expect. And then you have scan config. Scan config is obviously very important as well. We want to be able to determine how we're going to scan. Okay. So let's jump back over to sec info. We've just covered this and all the different types. Again, you can customize all these charts. You can literally make your own window and aggregate and visualize data in so many ways. It's just, it truly is amazing. But that's enough about security feeds for now. Let's move over to configuration. So this is gonna be important. Configurations, our target. This is, where, this is where we're gonna make a profile with a target subnet or hosts that we'll later call upon when we're creating a scan or a task. Now we have port lists, that's pretty straightforward. Credentials, this is gonna be for your internal enumeration or authenticated scanning. So just at a high level, you can scan a system or network from the outside, from the perimeter and from the inside or the sanctum sanctorum right on the inside. And that's where the credentials and authenticated scans are gonna come in. So those are gonna be looking for things like privilege escalation, the ability to establish a backdoor or gain persistence or to weaponize an existing machine that's compromised. All right, moving on, we have scan configs. Pretty straightforward, it's just scan configs. You can do what you want. Then there's the alert section, the alerts. So if you create an alert here, you have all these options and you can also attach reports, give a simple notice. So you can put in like custom details. You can set up automatic emailing. And this is really just going to trigger based on whatever you want, typically focused around certain types of vulnerabilities and severities. Let's look at schedules. Straightforward, set a schedule for the scan. 
Next one, report formats. We looked at that. Now we have our scanners. So you can see here we have our CVE and our open VAS scanner. We're of course going to be using the open VAS scanner. Well, I am for the most of it. It's a very reliable scanner. You can look at the details or no, you can't look at the details here, but you can look them up. The open VAS scanner is great. So is the CVE, but I think the open VAS is what I really want to focus on here. Looking at filters, these are going to be just filters for reports or data that's incoming. Tags, same thing, you can take certain types of information. Jumping over to administration, this is pretty simple. We need the ability to manage people using our vulnerability management platform. So you can create users, assign permissions to reports, to scans, to certain functions of the website. You can create roles, you can create roles within those groups. Then you have the performance option. And again, you know what, I actually forgot what this is about right now. It's not coming to mind, so I'm gonna skip it. But we have the trash can, so if we're deleting stuff, we can go and recover it. The feed status, we've obviously talked about that and been over it. But then you have LDAP and radius, so you could authenticate with Active Directory and set that up if you wanted to have an SSO type setup, which is really cool. But other than that, that's a quick 10 minutes. This covers Greenbone Security Assistance. That's a wrap. I'm gonna have more videos coming soon. And if you want to install this, hey, check out my installation video where I'll walk you through the few basic steps. It's incredibly simple. And I even show what the health report looks like and the command to run it. Super helpful. See everyone in the next video.